Hey up guys, welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. We're going to install this Stuart Turner shower pump onto this system that we've got in front of us here. So we'll start off with a poor shower pressure like this and then afterwards a greatly improved pressure and flow like this. Along the way we'll have a chat about the system that I'm installing, how head pressures work, about negative and positive head shower pumps and in general how these systems work and how a shower pump can help. Also it wouldn't be a plumber parts video if I didn't use the shower at the end of it dressed in one of my beautiful vests so that's something for you to look forward to plus every tool that we use in this video and also the pump that we're installing in this video will be available in our Amazon store as well links below there's also going to be a song for my patrons and ale army crew who all meet up with us on a Thursday night every week so we firstly got to put our header tank in. As you can see, I'm putting the ball valve in for the feed that comes off our mains water. And then also our two dedicated 22 millimeter feeds out of the bottom. Right then, so we're gonna get this beast into position now. It's important when you're installing a system like this that the cold feed down to your hot water tank and the cold feed to your taps is separate and in 22 mil. You're gonna notice here though that I'm running them both in 15 millimeter. That is just for the purposes of this video because we're only feeding one shower and I didn't wanna spend a fortune on 22 mil fittings just to rip all this out and take it to the scrappy a couple of weeks later. Cha-ching. <laughs> oh, I do love a little bit of soldering. Right, so our ball valve up there is now letting water in. We've got our two valves off there. Just follow these two pipes down to here. So to make this all work, we're gonna need some heat. I'm gonna use a standard immersion heater. And look, I forgot to tighten it up before I put the wire in. So I had to use my Irwin grips to tighten that up. So that was a little bit of a bum bum. Oh, I love that. It's all taking shape. Then what I'm gonna do next is install the cold feed to the bottom of our tank. This is the cold feed water from the tank upstairs in the loft, effectively the tank that's up on the rack, the big black plastic one. And that feeds cold water from our black plastic header tank down into the bottom of our hot water tank to be heated so it can come out of our taps later on. And don't worry guys, I'll be showing you a diagram of the whole system layout in a minute. It's standard procedure really when it comes to soldering. I know a lot of you guys like to have solders where you can't see any solder whatsoever, but I just don't subscribe to that. I just love to see a little bit of solder, make sure that we don't have any leaks. Even though I did make a bit of a mistake here, you'll see a tiny bit of snot on the back of the downward run of this T that I'm doing. And that's because I didn't wipe off the excess flux on the downward part of the pipe. And that always encourages the solder just to run down there. So always remember once you're about to do any soldering, when you've put all your fittings together and they've all been fluxed up, give them a bit of a wipe first before you put the heat on and the solder in. And as always, how can I forget, cool off with a nice little damp rag and then clean any stubborn flux scum from the pipe with some wire wool, being careful not to burn yourself. Once it's cooled down, obviously we can put the gubbins in for the drain off. And then finally, the creme de month, as I call it, give it a bit of a brasso and look at that. It comes up nice and beautiful. You can buy all the bits that I use for this in my soldering bag on the Amazon store. Right then guys, so we've got the water on up there at the moment. I've got a wee little leak, it's just got a nip up on the tank flange, would you believe? I just want to prove to you that we've got water going into this. The valve is open, we've got air pressure coming down here, through here, and look, and now we've got pressure building up in the air as this is filling up. So listen to this. That is all that air being forced out of there as this tank starts to fill up. So that's how these systems work. Gravity is letting the water flow down to the bottom of the tank. It's coming up here. And as I've got my hand over it, the air is starting to compress a little bit that's stuck in the top. And then I can let it out just like that. So I'm nearly ready to build the shower now. All I need to do is get my hot feed across to the expansion pipe and down, ready to go into our shower valve. And just to reiterate the difference it makes to give the pipe a bit of a wire wall and a brasso afterwards. Look at that, lovely. So then everyone, that was lovely to watch, wasn't it? Love doing a bit of pipe work. Love the smell of soldering, but more than anything, I love the smell of jointing paste. Honestly, if you could eat it, I'd eat it. Don't try that at home. So we're getting the basics together of this system now. As you can see, we've got our cold feed running down this middle pipe here, goes under that pipe there, and then goes in at the bottom of the tank. 
I hope you like the little touch of bringing the drain off there. Far too often I go to tanks and the drain offs are hidden around the back of the tank. Guys, when you're installing a tank, bring the drain off around to the front of the airing cupboard if you can, or wherever it's installed, bring it to an easy place so whoever comes back, because it's probably gonna be you, can drain it down easily, don't hide it away. Then we'll have our cold water will enter in the bottom here, it goes up through here, it's heated up by our immersion heater, and then we've got our hot water pipe just out there. It's gonna go down and then probably into our shower valve that's gonna be around here somewhere, or I might have it over here, depends. But also we've got our expansion pipe going up and that'll go over just out of shot into the top of the tank. Remember what I said, I can't stress this enough. You usually wouldn't do this in 15 mil. All this would be done in 22 mil and only the last little bit going to the shower feeds would be in 15. What I'm gonna do now is build our little bit of wall out we're gonna put our shower valve in, we're gonna pipe it up, and you're gonna get a really good idea then about what head pressure is all about and why sometimes we need shower pumps to improve that, but also why some shower pumps don't work because there isn't enough head pressure. Because a lot of people go, oh, I've got a new shower pump, i fitted it, it doesn't work. But there's two little tricks you can do to a shower pump to make sure that it's a head pressure issue, okay? So I'm gonna get on with that, guys, and you can listen to this lovely wee little message while I do it. Guys, we're almost at this wet stage, baby. I want a good head, but does the shower have the power to rain on me? Oh, yeah. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button now, make sure you ding my bell. So you never miss an upload And the interactive crib that I made for you too Make sure you visit all the rooms There is so much for you to learn about the plot Make it your hobby there, yes? And why don't you go along To my other channel vlog It is called Times with James All these links below oh, It says now time this yeah one now to find out about head pressure now I won't waste your time just like I'm doing right now so let's get on with this video now oh. yeah 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 I've changed clothes gotta wash sometimes <laughs> Right, so this is the system layout we've got. Obviously we've got our, our feeder tank up there, massive tank of water that is gonna feed cold water into our tank at the bottom but via this pipe. That's gonna get heated up by our immersion heater, which I've already got on now, that's getting lovely and hot. And that's gonna come out this hot pipe here and then go into the hot side of our shower valve and off and off to loads of other outlets in the house. We've also got our expansion pipe up there, so when this hot water gets hot heated up and the molecules and that get excited, hot water expands, so it needs somewhere to go, so it just expands a little bit up that pipe. It should only very, very rarely run into the top of that tank up there. We've got another dedicated cold feed, really important to have that, off into the cold feed side of the shower valve. So we've got this hot now, let's bung the water on and let's actually have a look at how the shower is going to work at the moment and also have a quick chat about head pressure and how that works. So then guys, I'll be able to turn on the water now and we should be able to get some water out of this shower head, but we're restricted by the head pressure, which is why we're not gonna get, or I don't think we're gonna get very, very good performance out of this. So look, there's the performance we're getting at the moment. It's not great. And we have got hot water coming out. You can hopefully see some of the steam rising up out there at the moment as well. So why have we got this problem? What is going on here? Why have we not got very good head pressure? And this is going to explain for you guys at home why this is happening at your house at the moment. The top of this whole system, the top of it is where the water level lies in the top of that tank up there. So if I go further up, say I get my steps and go further up with it, the flow of water is actually going to get slower and slower and slower till it stops altogether because the shower head is now roughly almost at the same level as this tank up here. And it goes the same way if we get lower and lower and lower. We're going to find, look, you get even more out, which is why some houses that you go to, the ground floor like kitchen has got loads of water coming out but the upstairs bathroom is really, really struggling to get any water through and they're getting really upset by it. So before I tell you how to fix this problem, how to get it going with one of these pumps, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you get about a litre of water a minute 
when the shower is in the normal operating area. Easy way to do that is to get a stopwatch out, turn your shower on, start the timer, and see if it fills up a litre jug and it overflows in a minute. If you've got over a minute's worth of water coming out, you'll be able to use what's called a positive head pump, which is what we're going to be installing today. A positive head pump relies on an adequate flow of water coming through it through gravity to initiate a switch to turn the pump on and get our pressure up. If you don't have that adequate pressure, the pump will not kick in. What you'll need to get instead then is either a universal or a negative head pump. Search Stuart Turner app in the search engine and pop over to the app. This will help you when it comes to sizing what pump you need. As you can see here, we're working on a vented gravity system, so I'm gonna pop that in. We're only gonna be pumping one shower. We know that we're gonna be pumping hot and cold water as well. And also when we do our flow test in a minute, we'll know that it's above one liter of water a minute currently. And we also know that the level of boost we require is gonna be about 1.5 to 2.6 bar and then look at that we can see the pumps we can get product information and we can even buy them now as well so use any bucket or vessel that you know has got markings on the side of it and you can see there we just timed a quick minute just down there and what I'm going to do I'm going to use a bit of copper pipe with a red tie wrap around it so you can see the difference in water level when we fitted the pump later on and see how much better the flow and the shower will be. Right then guys so we see what the problems are now let's go about fixing it using this lovely Stuart Turner shower mate. The S on the side so this is a two bar twin the S means standard. So that means we are using a positive head and we know it's gonna work okay because we've already done our literage test. So under in the box, you've got your operating instructions here. Then we've got our flexible hoses just here. Very nice. Then we've got the actual pump itself. And there we go. That's what we're gonna be working on now to get this piece working. Let's have a look at some of the little features of this pump. Let's get these and you can pull those off. To know where the inlets are, it's really, really easy. You've just got these two arrows here. So now we know that our inlets are on this one here. So those ones, when you make sure you've got the rubbers on there, are gonna pop on just like so. And I'll just say for this bit as well, you don't do them up too tightly. There's no real point in massively over tightening these because they're on rubber and they're on a plastic nut. So you don't wanna be over tightening these. It's quite simple and straightforward. The outlets are on here. The outlets already have a non-return valve in them as well. So they comply with RAS and water regs. Uh, another couple of things as well, when we're doing the install later on, just read the tops of this. We don't want any flux to get near this piece. So the best thing you can do when you're doing an install for one of these is figure out where your pipe works going and then we'll whip this out of the way and then get on with the actual install. Underneath, we've got some nice thick rubber feet that will stop any vibration going through and if we look at the end this is how the pump works we've got our inlet comes in it gets introduced to the middle of the impeller the impeller is spinning around really really quick throwing water out that way and the only way it can get out is up this one here out to our shower head or out, out to our shower valve giving us a much better pressure so that's how these shower pumps work let's get it installed get it in then i can don one of my lovely vests and we can also time to see how much water we get out of it and how much better the flow is right then first things first let's get this water switched off and also i'll just take a little bit out of the shower just to make sure that's all off now and what we're doing we're actually letting the water out of the expansion pipe this is all slowly coming down till it gets to roughly about here and then that should stop water coming out then and we can actually get on with working on this because guys as you all know soldering right when there's water in the pipe is a nightmare yes ah right so the first thing you need to think about when you're putting one of these pumps where you're sighting it is number one access can you access it also is it low it wants to have as much head from that tank up there as possible to allow as much water through here as we can so when we open up any of the valves or anything like that it's going to really sort of open up the micro switch and it's going to initiate a life to the pump and it's going to start pumping and pressurizing and giving you the best shower experience you can possibly get so number one can you get at it things go wrong it's just life you have new moving parts you've got joints stuff like that you need to be able to get at this sometimes you're going to find these hidden under the bath sometimes, especially at the sort of head end of the bath because you've got quite a slope there and you can tuck it in there and get that hidden away behind the panels quite nicely. If you can get power there and you can get water there, I, you know, I don't think there's a massive problem with that. But most of the time you're gonna find these in the airing cupboard sat next to your tank just here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go through the ins and outs of how I install this. We're just gonna, you're just gonna watch me do the pipe work. We're gonna get it all nice and clean 
We're gonna sort it out. I melted a little bit of a clip there, naughty. So that's what I'm gonna do. Remember guys that all the tools I use in this video, including this massively amazing bag and all the stuff in it, and also my other Vito Pro Pack bag, you can get on our Amazon store, oh yeah. So what are we doing when we're installing a shower pump? We're merely interrupting the hot and cold feeds to a shower valve and then diverting them down into the shower pump inlet. Then all we do is install the outlets up to our old shower valve, just like we are here. You can see now that our hot and cold feeds are gonna go down to where the shower pump is. It's gonna be pumped and pressurized and then put back up into the shower valve. Right then guys, so we've got our two feeds, well we've got our two feeds in now. What you're gonna need to do, pop two valves on and make sure they've got an inline strainer with them. You will thank me in the future. As always, I try and keep my pipe work nice and neat with nice little bends in it, using clips first and then our pipe work going in second. After that, it's always handy to have a little bit of a brasso and a wire wall. Right then guys, so that's all done. Let's pop the water back on. Very important before we plug the power in or anything like that, we get the water back on and we make sure we've got no leaks. And then we open up both of the valves because we've got two valves at the top and then the two actual inline valves on the flexies. Then we're gonna open the shower as well and we're gonna fully purge the shower pump before we turn it on. So we just do one at a time and then now we just let water into there, that's the hot done. Just make sure we've got no leaks. So now we've got our valves open, all we need to do, and I'd recommend that you do this high up first, or do it however you like really, just get there, get your shower head, open it up, and just allow the water to purge through. If you see that, we're getting a few bits of air coming through there. Just leave it running for a good few minutes. So, you know, if, it, if you want to just time it, go put the kettle on or something like that. Um, disinfect your hands, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's just, you see there, look, it's just coming through now. Remember as well to do both sides as well. So just get the cold through. There we go, very nice. And then it does help sometimes just to go a bit low, really get some of that head pressure in. And just flick between the two, hot and cold. So I think we're there now, that's nicely purged. Right then guys, so now we're ready to turn on and actually commission this beast and see what our flow rates are like. I'm very excited as well. Let's get on with it. Right then guys, so the shower head is roughly where I'd have it. I mean, if you had it higher, Sometimes you're gonna get slightly less flow, aren't you? So let's turn it on. Let's see if all this kicks in. We've done what we should do. We've adhered to the instructions. Let's see if it works. Yes! Come on! Oh, guys, that is absolutely brilliant. That is absolutely fantastic. Really good. Let's see, um, let's really try it high up. Let's see if it will will kick in high up. I'm hearing the ball valve run as well for the first time. Let's try it up here. Uh, if it, it, honestly, if it kicks it in from up here for a standard pump, that is pretty insane. Let's see. Yes! <laughs> that is wicked. That is wicked. Oh mate, I'm well chuffed with it. Okay, well look, let's bring it down to where we were a minute ago. Remember that I've got my copper tube here that I've not moved at all. So let's see what we get in one minute's use now that we've got the pump on. Ready, steady, go. We've got loads more in there. Five, four, Right, there we go. There you go, it's pretty much on there. So look, that's the difference. One minute, now look at that. We've literally probably times that by five or six, the actual amount of water that we've got going in here. 
a much better, more enjoyable and useful shower. Exactly how one of these Stuart Turner pumps works, how they can make the flow from your shower much, much better, but also why you should install certain types of pump. So we've got the universal, we've got the negative head pump and the positive head pump. The positive head pump is the one that relies most on the head pressure delivered by the tank above us. That's why sometimes if I go to someone's house and they say, I've installed a brand new shower pump and it doesn't work, take the head off, sometimes hold it into the bath or the bottom of the shower, and lo and behold, the shower pump cuts in because it's got that flow over the micro switch and then it starts working okay. So really, really impressed with these. You can buy these in our Amazon shop. We've got the Stuart Turner pumps there. We've also got all the tools that we used in this video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Oh my God. Please hit that subscribe. Please also ding the bell, the old notification. So every time that we upload a new video, you get a notification about it. Also, we will be answering your questions on this video on Wednesday night. So please pop along for that. I might do it a live video. Now, a video where I install a shower isn't really a video unless I use it. Long time subscribers of Plumber Parts know that I like to dress up, don't I, in a lovely bit of cat related vest wear. So, in a second's time, when I click my fingers, you will see some absolutely beautiful leisure wear. Are you ready? Here we go. There we go, look at that lovely little bit of the bag. This is a hard in hand wash because I forgot to bring showers in with me. Oh, God, what am I doing? <laughs> Where's the shit? Where's the towel? Pop that there. Is this a great idea or not? I don't think it is, but it doesn't matter. Oh, I just want to say thank you to all of my bad patron crew. I just want to say it with me. Thank you for joining the airline. Cause I'm gonna say your names now So get ready patrons, yeah Alex Gregory, yeah. Alex Whiteley, Blair Trimble, Bobby Patton, Bradley Smith, Brian Ellis Jones, Jazz Lawson, Chris Cowley, Chris Kixer, Christian B. Howe, Daniel Cook, Daniel Rankin too, Daniel Stanton, Dave Hunter Zareski, Diamond Steve, Dyson 314, Emily Lawrence, Gadgetman 36, Gibbo and Greg, Aiden Joseph, James Price, John, John Linton, and Joseph Rowley, Kevin Ryan, Lawrence Pilgrim, Martin Pearson too. Matt Adams, Max Mainrow, Michael White, Phil Waller, Rachel Jones, Richard Gilmore, ooh, Ricky Patel, Ronald Bannister, Simon Conan, Scott Bellamy, Simon, Simon Wood, Stephen Aspinall, and Tim Adams, Tom Love, Tony Pybus, ooh, and Victor So thanks ever so much for watching today's PlumberParts.co.uk video. Please hit the subscribe button. Please, of course, hit the like. Comment below. We'll see you in next week's video. And, of course, join up at the Ale Army by clicking on the Patreon link below and getting involved. I'll see you then, guys. And remember, don't tank. Anyway, let's go to the end panel now and have a scrub with the big fat G.